Didn't really get where I wanted to get today in terms of sourcing. Definitely got behind, but took care of a bunch of other stuff. I like to use Sundays to just kind of do work that doesn't involve the phone or coordinating with anybody and really just sit down and deep dive in front of the computer. I'm really happy we have this setup here. Um, today we're, we're looking to place at least 200K, hopefully this week worth of inventory purchases. We really need to get to our goal of around 250K a week and be consistent at an absolute minimum. Um, I think we're gonna be able to get there by the end of the year, but we're kind of playing a little catch up, which is gonna cause us to you know, probably have to go a little bit above and beyond that to really be where we need to be. This week in the warehouse, we have a massive order that came in Friday that we have to finish up on Monday and make sure it gets shipped out and charged. Um, and then we have another order that we need to place for tomorrow, so that way it arrives hopefully next Thursday and not Friday. And we just really need to keep the cycle going. You have to build a system of well-oiled machines and honestly, it's pretty hard because the littlest thing can go wrong at any given time and you don't know what's gonna happen. We just filmed some new ads today as well. Um, got some section three verification calls set up. Uh, you know, if you're an Amazon seller dealing with section three, it is a little bit of a pain in the butt, but in the end of the day, how are you supposed to compete with these inauthentic and stolen inventory? Like as people trying to do the right thing, we really can't. So I believe section three is actually a good thing for us sellers that do do the right thing and act and sell properly it is good because it will get the bad actors off of the platform it just sucks to have to deal with now but it is what it is you know it's just part of doing business on the platform so got one of my partners set up and ready to go for their call tomorrow on this sunday we have a couple more to get taken care of um make sure that you're checking your supply chain and doing the right thing and selling authentic inventory because you will get caught at this point even if you're doing the right thing you might get caught up in the net it's a pain in the neck but it is passable so amazon's just becoming a place where you really need to be doing the right thing and following policies it's not like it was seven years ago where you were able to drop ship from walmart and make you know 20 30 40 thousand dollars a month in profit it's just not that way anymore so I'll definitely show you guys at some point how I'm doing the sourcing manually myself. I haven't done sourcing like this in a good amount of time because we do have a full team and staff. We have two US-based buyers as well as um, um, virtual assistants that help us with sourcing. But sometimes you just gotta get rid of the, um, sometimes you gotta just get rid of the, the rust and do it yourself and just make sure that you get to where you wanna go so you don't hit your goals. It's probably not sustainable for now, but at least for the next, or forever, but at least for the next 90 days or so, I'm gonna be jumping inside of the sourcing for our company and making sure we get it as large and as strong as it could be. So that was kind of the Sunday recap. Went for a two, one and a half mile run today, hit the sauna, hit the hot tub, just kind of took some wellness, you know, got ready for the week. Um, and you know, I like to write my week out in terms of what I really want to accomplish for the week and stuff like that on the weekends. That way we have pure goals. I don't know where my notebook, I don't know if you guys have seen me this before, but having a notebook to write down your tasks the night before for the next day, for me, it really like ingrains it in me when it's written in paper compared to like on an app or notion or anything like that. I just like them. It's kind of cool because I can go back to 2018 and see what I was doing any given day, just based on the notebook and how productive that day was. We used to even write W or L if I got a win, meaning I got all my stuff done or got a loss. But I'm really excited to make content again. I know I'm just kind of rambling here, but it's been a while since we've made any sorts of videos um, really just cutting back to basics here and trying to do the best we can do, follow Amazon's policies to a T, navigate the tough waters that Amazon's kind of putting in front of us at this point, because a lot of it is a little bit tough the way they're doing things and stuff like that. But you know, it's part of the process and it's the, the good part about Amazon is they bring you millions of customers that you're able to access for essentially $39 a month. And the bad part is you have to deal with their policy changes whenever they come up with them and stuff like that. But I mean, all their policies are reasonable. Their fees are a little expensive, but it kind of is what it is. Um, drop a comment below if you have a good system for returns and getting reimbursements from Amazon because we're having a little bit, not a hard time, but just trying to figure out the best way to do it in terms of 
you know, navigating, getting as much money back as possible for every single return that comes in on through Amazon, because a lot of the stuff that comes in, and I'm sorry, I'm doing this sourcing while I'm sitting here just because, um, I don't know, I wish I should probably screen share or something, but nonetheless, um, yeah, returns are a pretty big part of the business. So we wanna make sure we're doing them right and maximizing every dollar that goes through on returns. I might just have to kind of toss in a little bit of FBM so that way we can at least charge a restocking fee or something on returns because some of these people are messed up what they do. You know, they just, we get items that literally aren't even our item or even remotely close to the item that we originally sent in and sold, which is really weird. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, I'm doing some sourcing late night. I'm probably gonna call it a night in a little bit just because I've been I've been going for about 10 hours straight now and it starts to get a little tiring at night and you're not as good or as sharp, but hope you guys enjoyed the video and what we've been working on today. I really miss making videos and showing the journey and stuff like that because we really come a long way in a short amount of time and we're really working on some really 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 cool things and you know a couple of weird things happen where we just didn't feel like dedicating the time to content but it is so important just because the people that i've met because of the content that i've created and the people i've met online virtually you know you can't find those relationships in your everyday life. You're not gonna be walking down the street and find another Amazon seller. It's just not how things work. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, it should be a really cool vlog and we'll see what this week consists of and I hope it's you know really valuable and you learned something. I answered a pretty cool comment. I actually wanna read it. Um, let me pull it out. But essentially this guy questioned about getting his first warehouse and I just wanna to touch on this. Let's see. Uh, comments. I've responded to this guy said it's um at West Virginia gamer 231 he said can you give any insight on the adequacy of the warehouse size we're looking to internalize our prep the warehouse we're looking at is 1k square feet of retail slash office and 2,000 square feet of warehouse we we do about 10,000 <laughs> We do about 10,000 units a month, around 350 to 400K in sales. Do you feel like the warehouse space is adequate for this volume? Would you recommend starting larger? So basically I recommend, first of all, it seems like a lot of office and retail space for what you're looking for. You probably want like 2,500 square feet of warehouse and like 500 square feet of office at your size. Nonetheless, you wanna get as little space as you possibly can without being on top of yourself. A tip that I've figured out is like go up, get height and use racks and a forklift compared to getting more square footage because you're not paying the same way for vertical square feet as you are for physical floor square feet. So I would definitely recommend getting going up and you have to decide like do you really want to have a warehouse because you know if your rent is three, four thousand for that place but you're doing you know, 10,000 units. If you're paying 60 cents a unit to a prep center, I mean, you're paying 6,000. So if you have 3,000 in rent before you have payroll and insurance and supplies and staff and workers' compensation and Wi-Fi and water and heat and electric and all the different things, what are you gonna be spending more time on? Not to mention now you have to be at your warehouse at least 50 hours a week have people there, you have to consistently hire and fire and train and build, build systems. Whereas the money's really made in the sourcing if you think about it. So I would recommend getting a shorter lease if you can, waiting out as long as you possibly can before getting a warehouse, before you actually definitely for sure need it. It's definitely a good idea. But I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm gonna probably pack it up for the night because I'm getting tired, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video and where this vlog goes. I'm really excited to be back and you know, we'll just keep crushing it. So see you guys soon. Thank you for your business.